been four total games of Tall Guy, also known as Chris Stapps Porzingis, wearing that Mavericks jersey since the trade that everyone claimed that we lost happened. And since then, the Knicks have been 3-1 and one in that time. We played a great game today in what I'm calling the Julius Randle Tour. Started off the week playing against his ex-team, the Lakers, 34. Then goes to his other ex-team, the Pelicans, 32. And now tonight in his hometown, 44 points for Julius Randle. <laughs> Julius put on for his hometown, like you said, over 40 points. Shout out to my nine god, man. We were worried about him. Well, you guys were worried about him. I wasn't. And as I always say, he's able to snap himself out of it. His mentality, his determination, his just his his focus, his tunnel vision is way beyond someone who's just 20 years old. And he's back. Shout out to Nerlens Noel with that big boy man. block. Put it on a poster. Absolutely. I need that. This was just great basketball. I was a little bit worried when Tibbs was kind of exhausting our starters yeah. in that first half. They looked a little gassed. And I was like, no, we're not doing this again. But... Julius was not going to lose in his hometown, so I appreciate that. And let's do it again on Sunday. 30 wins on the season. Vegas had us at 22 and a half. Feels beautiful right now. Just love it. I'm loving every single moment of this. Mm -hmm. And this game in particular, Julius Randle was in his bag from the get-go. I love every single moment of this game. There's just not, we had like we lost the lead for a little bit, but they came right back. Knicks were not going to go down. They fought tooth and nail all the way to the end. That's just what, what you want to see from this team. And the defense clamped up. We got great minutes out of Taj. We got great minutes yeah. out of Nerlens Noel. Finney Smith has to be going home and be like, man, I got sun today. <laughs> <laughs> everything. I love it. Love everything about it. And there's a lot, a lot of things that was going on in this game that was really irritating. But the Knicks played through it. Julius Randle having a, a tremendous game. And, and like both of you guys said, there was just that moment. I feel like it was more in that third quarter where it was just starting to feel like, oh, God, we're going to make this way more difficult than it needs to because it just looked like we were gassed. The ball movement stopped. And it just looked like it was going to be a, a, a more difficult uh, ending than it truly was because, you know, R.J. Barrett, you know, after having I, – I wouldn't even say rough, but it was just a slow start. He then took the game over and had that tremendous second half, holding it down until Julius Randle came back on the court and did what he did. And um, yeah, we played through a lot of, lot of, lot of calls that were not called uh, on our side, but we we should be used to that by now for sure. But uh, nonetheless, this is a win that we needed. You know, after they they stole that first one from us, we were able to get our revenge here on this one and keep KP to one and three against his former team, remembering what he wanted to leave behind. We were playing uptown on, on them on every possession, you know, for all the way to the, the that block by Nerlens Noel at the end of the game, giving up his whole damn body to block uh, Finney Smith. You know, we were we were in their face at every every possession. Luka did not play too well offensively tonight, and R.J. Barrett was the one that was on him for the most of the night. It was between R.J. Barrett and Reggie Bullock who were going back and forth with him, and he was getting frustrated with this. So, uh, to Alex's point, you know, with your shots not able to go in, let me get the cheap ones at the free throw line. Let me do what I do. Let me talk to the, these referees and see if I can get these fouls or complain to these referees so I can get these fouls because my shot's not going in, so I got to get my point some way. Um, I mean, he did have some nice shots there at the end of the game, but it was garbage time for them. But, uh, yeah, so I, like I said, I, it, I, it's annoying to watch. It's really annoying to see, but that also means we're doing something right. I just wanted to say that the defensive rotations, the last stretch of these games, five games, have been absolutely a pleasure to watch. Like, everybody's talking. Even when Rose and that unit comes in, everybody, the, the isolation drops off a little bit in the one-on-one. -on -one. And honestly, that's that's the thing. With When we talk about who we want to play, we had trouble against the Nets and we had trouble against the Celtics because of, you know, those one-on-one -on -one Tatum, Brown, Durant, Harden, Irving. But if we go up against a team that doesn't have an elite one-on-one -on -one isolation player, we have a lot of guys that are willing to hustle their way out yeah. on a 24-second possession. And if we can get Mitch back and get rebounds, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I, I'm not scared of the Bucks. I'm not scared of a lot of these teams. If we could get the sixth, fifth, fourth uh, seed, you know, we're looking at we're looking at a playoff series victory. Um, I, you just look at um, also. I want to give the Knicks a, another shout out because everybody uh, talks about the Eastern Conference and how the Eastern Conference is weak and and we you know we we're we're the sixth seed in the Eastern Conference. Relax. Well, look who we beat the last couple games. Right. All teams at the bottom 
of that of that playoff contention in the West. You know, they put beat the Grizzlies, we beat the Lakers, we beat the Mavericks, we beat the Pelicans, we're going to beat the Pelicans again on Sunday. So if the Knicks were just shot for some reason into the Western Conference, there's no reason for me to believe that we wouldn't be in the exact same spot that we are right now. Like he just mentioned, everyone's talking about the Knicks because you know that the Knicks are the real the real uh, team in this city. And I'm looking at the standings and, you know, the Brooklyn Nets, they're right there around trying to get that first seed. But not a soul cares, not except for those bots. And even the bots probably aren't even programmed to care about it, too. They're just there to um, cheer every now and then with the um, pumped-up noise in their stadiums. But, yeah, man, 100%. I uh, loved everything he was talking about there. And, you know, I, I agree. Like, these wins that we had, you know, people are probably going to try and, you know, shrug off a lot of the wins that we had throughout the season. But like he just mentioned, we played a tough Grizzlies team that right before us, they were picking off some of the better teams in the Western Conference and some of the um, top Eastern Conference teams right before they played us. Um, you know, the Lakers are still the Lakers. I don't care who's missing on that team. They're still trying to fight for their playoff lives right now. And, then, yeah, the Pelicans are, you know, ESPN's favorite team besides the, the uh, Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. You know what I mean? So we, we handled business the way we're supposed to handle business in this uh, this stretch of games. And, yeah, we got to get some respect put on our names, man. Yeah. You know, shout out to Julius Randle, man. He had 44 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. But I know my queen going to like this. That boy, nine god He had 13 points in the fourth quarter. You feel me? He hit some clutch buckets. And this game was over once Noel got that block, man. I'm so hyped right now, man. I want to go block a shot right now, too. You feel me? That's just <laughs> how we grow. And the fact that we had 14 uh, threes, we shot 51% from the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's only going to get better, y'all. To all my Knicks fans right now, man, witness the growth of what we're watching right now, man. Because everybody, let them keep hating. They're not going to give us no respect because we don't have the superstars. But you know what? It's all good. We can fly under the radar and do what we got to do. You feel me? So shout out to you guys, man. Love the show. Appreciate y'all. And uh, y'all have a good night. Let's go, Nick. Uh, the shots are going in. That's that's what we need to see. And a lot of them going in from Julius Randle. Uh, but that, like I said, the, 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 the point of the matter is the New York Knicks, we have a problem of you know, offense being our main issue, but we are coming into back-to-back -back games where we scored uh, over 115 points, you know what I mean? That's that's good, and, and I think uh, we had a few 100-point uh, games outside of just these last two, uh, the Lakers and going down the line. I can't remember them off, off the top of my head. The offense is seeming to come together. Obviously, you know, with us losing Alec Burks tonight, I think a lot of us were worried that um, we, were, we, we weren't sure where the offense was going to come from tonight, but Julius Randle and everyone was able to handle business just the same way. You know, Derrick Rose did his uh, bit off the bench. He's like we talked about RJ Barrett, um, Julius Randle, uh, you know, Frank Nielkina came in there and gave us some good minutes in the few uh, minutes that he gave um, on the court. Uh, even the everyone's favorite, Alfred Payton, you know, so it was one of those <laughs> things where <laughs> it was one of those things where, you know, we still held it down. And I, I talk about it all the time. Like we are a deep team that doesn't go deep pause you know what i mean like we have the guys we have the people ready to go but we play that those short rotations that you you seem to forget that when somebody goes out that we like we have that guy like kevin knox didn't even play this game and i'm sure if there's ever a situation where kevin knox can come in he can come in there and give us some offense too so i, I just love the dynamic and i love the the vibe of this team knowing that we have everyone playing the role and doing what they're supposed to do when they get called upon i like the way julius has been progressing and if anyone has seen julius from when he's entered the league he used to just be a, a in the paint under the rim type of player and if you just watch it if you just look at his shot chart from where he's come to now he's expanded his game where he's now consistent from three he can shoot from anywhere he can just shoot the especially the baseline fade away that's just automatic at this point every year he's progressed and developed his game he and he's still maintaining <laughs> high counting stats right yeah. whether it's points rebounds and, and now assists and he's always been a good passer it's just been passing out of those bad uh, out of those double and triple team situations which we saw last season and he's doing this season i don't see julius randall regressing back to what he was a season ago just because i think for, just from reading, you know, when we read the Players Tribune article, right, yeah. saying how he just wants to get better, the 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 influence that Kobe was onto him and what he has to do, just going after everywhere he lands, he goes to a gym and gets some shots up, get mm -hmm. put put in a workout. On top of that, you have a guy who's never been in the playoffs before and is now on the brink of the playoffs and just wants long term success. I don't see how if he was one of those guys that just wanted to just 
enjoy life and not get better at basketball, he would have fallen out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And yet every step that he's gone, he's been picked up by another team. Someone's seen something in him and they're just waiting. They were just waiting for him to come into that moment where he could be that type of player. The question always is, is he that one, two, third option? As of right now, he's our number one option, and he's doing a really good job at it. We're at 30 wins. We're at number six right now in the East. We're in playoff We're in playoff push mode. We're in contention to not even be in the plan right now if things are going this way. I think, you know, he's only getting better. And I think, you know, going back to that Players' Tribune article, I actually read it, and sometimes it takes you seeing – you know, getting a, separate, a second opportunity because you look at how Randall's career started, the injury, right. first game out. Like, yeah. that's not something any player wants to deal with, and that can go ahead and that can put you in a in turmoil mentally. And then you get this second opportunity or, you know, third opportunity to go ahead and play in a big market. Uh, third opportunity in your, in your career, but your second opportunity to play in a big market, and you fumble that in your first season. And a lot of people don't get the opportunity to correct that. You know what I mean? A lot of people, that would be one and done. So he really took that personal. And his relationship with Kobe Bryant, I think, really kind of lit a fire under him um, to be better and to take that season and use it as a learning curve. And I think that you'll start to see things um, from him that maybe I think when you start to add different pieces to this team, maybe you won't see the amount of games um, in totality that he scores these high points because now you have other people that you can go ahead and um, divvy out that role to. You know what I mean? You don't have to carry the team so much like he's having to do right now because we still have so many holes in our offense and in our not so much in our defense, but in our offense. We still have a lot of things we have to correct within this team. So when you start to add other factors, other players who can carry that load, maybe you won't get so many 40 plus games from him or 30 plus games from him, but you'll still get the type of player that he's becoming, that caliber of a player. He just won't have to work as hard, you know? Yeah. But I agree with Alex. I don't think that you're gonna see him regress. He has a chip on his shoulder. He wants to be in New York. He wants to play in the city. He wants to bring a championship to the city. He wants to be in the playoffs. He wants to be in the conversation. And he's made a complete turnaround in his career. And this is the turning point. And this is where you're really going to start to see Julius Randle become a name. I mean, if you look at the, the lower third of tonight's game, it was Randle versus Luca. I mean, he's never had that type of um, star power. He's never had that type of spotlight on him, and he's ready for that. He wants that, and there's no way he's turning back. Julius Randle is, is holding up holding up Godfather in New York right now. You know what I'm saying? You gotta love it, man. Let's ride this tour we ride with. First, it was dealing with all the ones that didn't want him, first of all, like the LA Lakers, then the, the New Orleans Pelicans, you know what I'm saying? Then he went back to pay a visit back to his own neighborhood in Dallas because he don't live there no more. He a New York native. He down with us right now. You gotta love and appreciate what he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Him and him and nine guard. Oh man, check the time the game started. That was 9 30. So you know the nine and the 30 was gonna rock the night and do their thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what nobody say, what nobody think, how nobody feel. In fact, I need player of the week. I need player of the month. I need all that. I need my man to get all his props. You know what I'm saying? Everything, you know what I'm saying? Man, putting up 30s and 30s and rounding it off with a 44. That's George Gervin back on the backboard again. The Iceman poster. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that right there but you gotta appreciate gotta love what this man is doing you know what I'm saying that's five games you know what I'm saying you ball your fist open it up you see five 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 you know what I'm saying Jackson Fires feeling so good. Fire heartbeats feeling so good, man. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a beautiful sight, man. You gotta appreciate, gotta love it, man. I'm on my toes right now, you know what I'm saying? And tell you the truth, don't nobody want to play us. Before they used to wake up and say, Oh, we got the Knicks. That's an off night. Nah, they wake up now and say, We got the Knicks. Oh man, let me get iced up and get prepared. Cause it's gonna be a brutal game. That's why nobody ain't gonna want to play us in the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? I don't care before. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't care what seed we are. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate and love everything we've done this year right here to the fullest, man. Our turn is coming completely, man. Ain't going to be no, you know what I'm saying, no mishaps come next season. We can really solidify this whole roster all the way around the board. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to continue on doing our thing, man. You got to appreciate and love it, man.